So this is a, a draft, uh, excerpts from a draft of the foreword to the new edition of my book, the one that's going to be out next year, uh, the 2018 edition of Code Red, Computerized Election Theft and the New American Century. And just bear with me, and I, I hope it doesn't keep us here uh, too long. I'll, I'll try, to, try to economize. These times beset by lies cry out for honesty. If we are to survive the age of Trump and find our way back, If we are to survive the age of Trump and find our way back from the brink of surrealism, it will have to start with our best efforts to describe reality as we see it, building upon facts and not shrinking either out of tact or on the sage advice of the marketing department from calling a spade anything but a spade. I can think of no more honest way to introduce myself and what I'm about in this book than to copy in the text of an email I sent recently to the editor of the New Yorker magazine, David Remnick, in response to an article of his entitled The Divider. Who's, who's a New Yorker reader here? Okay, well, it's a wonderful, you know, wonderful magazine, mostly the fictional stuff, which includes most of the non-fictional stuff. Um, and David's a wonderful guy, and he's done wonderful things. Um, I think it speaks for itself, and I will pick you up if you're still there on the other side. Dear David, yet another Trumpian outrage, Charlottesville, but does it really matter which one? Yet another Remnickian outcry, the divider, but ditto. Resist, resist, you say. Yes, okay, in every way we can. I assume we're ruling out guns and bombs, so then parades and petitions and protests and poll responses and little acts of decency and fairness and kindness for whatever that gets us. And then next year we get to vote. And those votes become strings of ones and zeros, yes, even in op scans, counted behind an impenetrable curtain. Paper, you say, recounts, you say. Study December 2016 well, I say, and take careful note of what became of the paper and the recounts. Counted there somewhere in the pitch dark of cyberspace by the likes of ESNS, Dominion, oh Lord, and Command Central, yes sir. Those ones and zeros elected not just Donald Trump, but if you could bring yourself to consider the reams of statistical forensics pattern data, good enough for everything from astronomy to agronomy, Enough right-wingers at both federal and state levels to give the radicalized GOP the majorities it needs to keep enabling the cancer-in-chief in his depravity. So you tell us to resist. Is or, not, is or is not the media having the time of its life with this? But do next to nothing to protect our primary, indeed only, effectual means of doing so. You have dropped the ball consistently, disastrously, you are, in your blinded, never happen here passivity, complicit. A strong indictment, but if you're still reading, and it takes valor to read such a scathing critique, ask Trump, who squeals like a stuck pig at far milder pokes. Not beyond remedy, but you'd have to get on the stick hard and soon. Start making it a regular feature. You know that with the prevailing national attention span, once or twice won't do it an exploration of the rot at the core of the most foundational protocol of our democracy, and a clarion call for the restoration of public observable vote counting. In time for 2018 and 2020. I'll write it for you for free, or put Evan Osnos on it, or write it yourself, there's no one better. Blame it on the Russians if you must, though insiders have been working this game since Hava passed in 2002, at least long before the Russians took an interest. Whatever. Just please recognize that. One, resistance comes down to elections. Two, elections come down to the counting of votes. Three, vote counting in the US is absurdly vulnerable to computerized manipulation and alteration. Four, the political universe is well stocked with ends justify the means true believers and cynics more than willing and demonstrably able to exploit that vulnerability. And most important, five, this nightmare could and would end with one stinking honestly and accurately, i.e. publicly and observably, counted election. Ask the Dutch, ask the Germans, ask the Irish, ask the Canadians, now you can ask the Norwegians. 
Is America really that exceptionally stupid as to go it alone in not getting it? Will it be America's fate to succumb to fascism by fraud because its David Remnicks could not bear to look seriously and open-mindedly at the evidence of how it was happening? With appreciation for all your good work, with a shred of hope, with best wishes, Jonathan. I write many such missives. Thanks, I, I think you're giving it a better reception than, than he, he probably did. But I, I write many such missives, sometimes as many as a dozen a day. And there have been thousands of days since this all got rolling. Some are more tactful, less irritable, less urgent. Some even angrier, more frustrated, more desperate. I rarely expect answers, and my expectations are rarely disappointed. You could populate a good-sized village with bright, thoughtful, patriotic, non-responding shoulder shruggers. <laughs> Democracy begins to end when its beneficiaries go lazy and passive, when they are seduced by speed, ease, convenience, entertainment, and that happened before Trump. In fact, the cancer became stage four when the U.S. began counting votes in the pitch dark of cyberspace and trusting the critical process to a handful of private, partisan, secretive outfits and expecting, in fact, with unshakable blind faith, that it would proceed honestly and accurately. After all, we figured, we can see why someone would shoot up with PEDs to win the Tour de France, but who would ever want to steal a U.S. election? The evidence is plentiful that the Republican, and not just the Republican, but transmogrified far-right Republican hegemony at both national and state levels owes its existence with but-for causality to the targeted manipulation of vote counts over the past 15 years. And of course, we'll throw in the other many, many thumbs on the scale, and one of the things we've seen today uh, is that if you govern abysmally enough, you've got to come up with more thumbs and make them heavier. Uh, hence the Kobach Commission and various other uh, thumbs uh, that are going to be coming down hard on that scale in 2018 and 2020. And it is that hegemony that is enabling the monster Trump, though it is clear enough that the Democrats, who sit idly and silently by as they suffer one shocking defeat after another, who sit idly and silently by as recounts are thwarted, who simply use the latest defeat and GOP depravity for yet more desperate fundraising, have no greater interest than do their right-wing counterparts in restoring public sovereignty. And the media? Well, as I wrote to David, it's having the time of its life. Nothing like a horny dragon to slay, but public observable vote counting, serious electoral reform? No, we don't go there. And while I enjoy in a grim sort of way the torrents of Trump disparaging, disparaging adjectives and adverbs, I really don't see much hope in it. At some point, 2018, 2020, it comes down to elections, and that comes down to vote counting, and if that remains computerized, privatized, and secret, I don't see any reason to expect reason to prevail over derangement. We have watched the situation go from perilous to critical to surrealistic. Let's hope it has not gone beyond rescue. There's an old joke about a guy who jumps off the top of the Empire State Building. Someone with an office on the 40th floor sticks her head out the window and asks, how's he doing? Okay, so far, comes the answer. <laughs> if this once applied to America in the computerized voting era, that time is past. I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much.